All right. Um, hi guys. Not used to doing videos. Don't like doing videos. But anyway, here goes. Um, a quick few words about the question I gave you there before the Easter, um, because I'm giving you a similar question today, and I haven't received um entries or I suppose posts from all of you for the answer so let's just have a look and see what's what's involved in it anyway so i gave you the insulation chapter to go over and go through um and to take notes on and then i gave you this question from 2009 it was an ordinary level one and i want to give you a higher level one by the end of the week i want to work through this chapter and continue working through theory chapters for the next few weeks anyway so 2009 ordinary level it says the arrows show three areas through which heat is lost in a poorly insulated dwelling house the house has a slated roof concrete block external walls with a cavity and a solid concrete ground floor uh, you were asked to select any two areas of the dwelling house and using neat notes and neat freehand sketches describe how you would insulate the area selected to reduce heat loss Indicate in your sketch the type of insulation and give the typical thickness. Okay, so actually I should have highlighted there. Um, type of insulation and typical thickness. Okay, so first thing I'm going to say is go through the question and highlight the important bits so you know you don't leave any part of it out. Now, I also gave you the marking scheme for the question so you had an idea what was involved. And I suppose also to kind of make you aware that there was notes and there was sketches and there was eight marks each for those. Okay, part B then was discussed two advantages of increasing the thermal insulation levels in a dwelling house. And again, four marks for advantage one, four marks for advantage two. Now, one thing I need to say here, this is ordinary level. And in an ordinary level question, typically um, the majority of marks go at the start of the question. So there's very little here for this piece at the end. And a, con uh, a higher level question would be far more involved than this. And the marks would be a little bit more fairly distributed. Okay. So 2009, so I've already done out the solution to the question. This is online for you. Uh, you'll be able to download just a photograph of what I have here in front of me just to help you. And you can compare it with what you did yourself. So, okay, as usual, I'm just going to go through the basics here, the, the housekeeping, so to speak. Very important that the question is laid out correctly and clearly. So I know what I'm answering. I know when I'm answering it. I know what I'm answering and I know what number it is, etc. So just back to the basics, things that you shouldn't forget. Now, what I did with this, okay, and if you look at it, it doesn't really look like a typical solution. Because I said the easiest way for us to answer questions is to try and put things in point form. Um, so try to stay away from this writing a big long paragraph for two reasons. One, it gets you all jumbled up. But also when an examiner is correcting it, it can be quite difficult to, to correct. So what we're going to do anyway is what I said was, okay, part A was... Let's look at it again. Select two areas and describe how you'd insulate them to reduce heat loss and what type you'd use and what thickness. Now, it doesn't say you can or that you have to write in the thickness as part of your text or as part of your image. It doesn't matter. Once it's there, it's there. They have to give you marks. So I said, right, area one where heat was lost, I was saying, OK, the roof. So how do I fix that? Well, this is where I started kind of breaking down the question rather than writing a big paragraph I said well how would I do that so I'd place insulation in the attic that mark answer would get me two marks and then I said well what type of insulation do we normally use in other words putting down all the information you already know putting down what you have learned the keywords well what is insulation just because I didn't ask for it doesn't mean you don't put it down and why am I saying that it's because you're asked to describe so describe means broaden, say more than you think they're asking you. So I said, well, what type? So you can use sheep wool, rock wool, fiberglass, cork or wood fiber. Now, if you don't understand any of those or they, they sound like alien words to you, you need to go back to your textbook, page 280, and it explains them and how they're made and what they're used for. Then I said, how much? OK, so, well, insulation should always be a minimum depth of 200 millimetres and there should always be a second layer then over the joist. So remember, we're talking about roofing here, so it's over the joist. Where should that insulation be placed? Well, because that's my next question, how, what, where, when. Think of how, what, where, when always. Uh, the insulation should be placed between the joists and above the joists. So more insulation should be placed across and over the lower layer. And you must make sure to allow ventilation of the attic space above the insulation. Now, I put in a note here. Anytime you see um, a question that I've done out and I have these little bubbles or colours or NBs or whatever, it basically means, right, this is the answer to the question, but you'll find more information in here on page 280. You'll also see this sketch that they're referring to. So I then do my sketch. Now, a little bit about sketches. You're all big enough, 
I'm bold enough now to be able to draw nice, tidy, accurate, neat sketches. OK, so I said to myself, well, what do I need to show? Because sometimes it's hard to know what you should sketch. What should you draw? And more importantly, how, how to draw it. So I said, well, what am I after saying up here? I said, well, more insulation should be placed across and over the lower layer. Now, if, if I'm someone who doesn't do construction studies or whatever, I don't know what that means. I don't know what that looks like. So I said, right, well, what did the Joyce in the ceiling look like? So I drew the sketch. And by the way, it is figure 1713 in your book if you want a clearer version of that. But I said, OK, I need to explain this through a sketch. So I need to use a picture to explain a sketch. So I said, well, what is cross layering? Essentially, it's where you place the insulation in between the joists and then you go back at 90 degrees. So you cross layer. What's it? What is a cross? It's an X. OK, so you cross it across the joists and you lay it down. And essentially, this is what it looked like. So it's cross layering of insulation. It closes any gaps in the first layer. So then when you're labeling a diagram, you say to yourself, well, why am I drawing this? And write down whatever it is. Write down whatever's in the head. If it's not on the page, zero marks. You can't get marks for it. So I then I said, well, what um, type of insulation could you use? So I said fiberglass. And I said, all right, depth minimum of 200 millimeters. Now, there was eight marks for the information contained in that sketch. Okay. So there was eight marks up along here for explaining it. Eight marks for the, the sketch that explained it as well. And then really, really important, five marks for quality of sketch. Now, there's none of you there that shouldn't be getting five marks for a quality sketch. OK, take your time and do it. Do it right. Use a few colours. Um, make it good. All right. Then just before I went on to the next page, in terms of tips for this bit, describe means you need detail. Now, when I say tips, I mean this is for everything. This is for projects. This is for questions. This is for theory exams. This is for other subjects. So describe means you need detail. So you need to expand and say as absolute as much as you absolutely can. Um, and then I said the four things that are very important issues when answering this question are the how, the what type, how much and where. They're very, very important. In, in other words, at any point in any question, ask yourself, what have they asked me? Um, so who the kind of the who, what, why, where and when. Right now, sometimes who isn't relevant, but go through that who, what, why, where and when and then answer all of those questions and see then you, well you should have enough information at that point all right so that was part a um but be careful it was part a of um one area so then i went right let's go further we were supposed to do the same thing with some other area of the question hang on i'll just check my camera and see yeah okay all right so area two then i said was in the walls now there was three areas you could have said you could have said the walls, the roof, or you could have said the flooring. Um, actually, is it more than three? No, no, a second, I'll just check this. Um, <clears throat> yeah, walls, roof, and floors. Yes, I was right, floors. Okay, so that's obviously done in, in a different area. So... This isn't the only answer that is acceptable, but this is one that is correct. So walls. So I said to myself, well, how? Now, the walls is a little bit trickier to do because we know a lot more about them. And there are four different ways of insulating walls and more importantly, retrofitting the insulation. So one way of doing it, and I actually had three written down originally and it dawned on me then that it was a four. Anyway, so four different ways. First, insulation, insulation in the cavity placed against the inner leaf. So we know that that's the typical, that's the normal. If you're building a house, that's what you would do. You place it against the inner leaf. Um, and you leave that air gap between the inner and the outer leaf to make sure that you don't have any cold bridging. Then you have dry lining in the internal surfaces. So essentially that's going into a room, replastering it using plasterboard that contains insulation. Uh, you can fill the cavity, which is the drilling holes in the outside wall, the external wall and pumping in insulation. And you can apply insulation to the outside surface of the wall. So you can also like... Um, sort of like when you plasterboard the inside, you can plasterboard the outside as well. Similar to that. Now, it's not quite plasterboard. It's a different type of stuff, but you can. OK, so those are four different ways. Now, because they asked me for an area, how to fix it. Right. I've listed the four different ways, but I, I'm, I, can, I only need to explain one. So I said, right, I'm going to explain and concentrate and fill in the cavity. I think that, to be honest, is the easiest one to explain and the easiest one to write about and think about and draw about. So... I wrote down, I'm going to concentrate on what? Number three, filling the cavity. 
So then I said, back to the words I had in the last part of the question, how, what type? So I said, okay, polystyrene beads or cellulose may be used. So that's normally what's used if I'm filling a cavity. How much do I put in? Well, that's kind of hard to, I suppose, describe, but it's basically, it's loose fill insulation. It's injected into the cavity of the existing walls until that cavity is full. Okay, where does it go? Well, holes of diameter are about 25 millimeters, which is an inch, are drilled into the external leaf. So the outside of the house, a special pumping system is used to pump the insulation into the cavity. Okay, and again, like the last question, it's two, 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 two. So eight again for all of that. And at this stage now, and I'm going a bit faster because you can read it yourselves in your own time. And I think it makes sense. Um, moving on to the diagram. So this time I said, well, again, how do I explain that in a diagram? That's basically it. How do I explain it? So I show my outer leaf. I show my cavity. I show my inner block. So this is the inside of the room. This is the outside of the room or outside of the house. Um, what happens to it? Well, a hole is drilled. And actually, now that I look at it, there's extra information I could add there as well. And I'm going to add it. So the bees are injected under pressure through the wall. Okay, a hole of 25 millimeters is drilled. Okay, so that's important because we had already stated that. Now, why not put it onto our sketch? Um, they're injected in here and what happens is then they rise because of the pressure that's created in the cavity. The beads rise up and they fill the cavity. Polystyrene beads. And just back to the marking scheme, eight for the, the, the diagram that explains it, five for the quality of your sketching. All right, so that's the majority of the question answered. Now... They then asked us as part of question two, okay, for two advantages of increasing the thermal insulation levels in a house. Now, to be honest, this is common sense. This is the sort of thing that you don't need to be studying construction studies to, to, to really figure it out. So first of all, and I wrote down five different options here that could be answered. So you only need two and there's four marks for each one, eight in total. So I said the house will be warmer and more comfortable. Makes sense. House warmer, less, uh, less hot air escaping, etc. Now, if the house is warmer, and I'm actually going to skip on a little bit to number three, because connected to that, so inside in your exam, you're thinking, you're thinking, okay, the house will be warmer. What does that also mean, though? It means the cost of heating will also be reduced because you're able to keep the house warmer. You're, there isn't heat escaping. Therefore, you're not paying for more heat to reheat the room. Um, number two, then, it'll lead to a reduction in the use of non-renewable fossil, fuel, fossil fuels, not fuels, um, for condensation and drafts will be eliminated. Uh, look at that word drafts, by the way, make sure you can spell it. It's a funny one. Um, and there will be a reduction in CO2 emissions into the environment. Now, to be honest, yes, there's five there, but I always like to give one that is local to the house in a sense, as in local to the occupants. And, you know, so the house will be warmer is one I'd consider that. Uh, cost of heating, we would just, and others, how does it affect the homeowner? But I'd also look at uh, an environmental one as well. So two advantages, one environmental, one for the house owner themselves. And then any two of those for full marks. Now, so that's my question answered. But, and this, to be honest, is nearly the most important thing here today, or the most important thing that, that we're looking at. Describe. Now, this comes from all your chapters. I just want to look at those three words. They come up a lot. They come up in, well, they come up in nearly every question you do in nearly every topic in nearly every subject. But really, what do they mean? Okay, so describe means give a detailed account in words. A detailed account in words. So describe a detailed account in words. I've said that a load of times now and I feel weird saying it. But anyway, if you remember it and learn it, that's okay. Detailed. What does that mean? It means you write a good bit. Now, that doesn't mean it has to be a paragraph. It can be point after point after point, And that's easier for us to do and easier for an examiner to correct. Okay, indicate means label with arrows. So basically indicate, show. Put on a label, put in an arrow, show exactly. And the other one that comes up is discuss. Now, discuss, people seem to think is the same as describe, but it's not really. Discuss includes a description. So it means write about whatever it is in detail, taking into account different ideas or issues. Okay, so discuss. So, for example, if I'm discussing uh, the advantages, so this part of it up here, so discussing the advantages of increasing thermal insulation, I would say write the house will be warmer and more comfortable for the occupants. That's kind of a, a, a describe, isn't it? Because that's what's happening. And I'd say, and that will also lead to 
a reduction in CO2. So that makes it a discuss. Now, that wasn't a discuss type question, so it's kind of hard to do that. But if you write down nothing else from these three pages that I've done for you, will you at least write down the remember part? Now, to finish, I'm glad you're hearing, I'd say you're glad to hear that. I'm giving you a similar question today, but I've jumped forward to 2019. And again, like the last time, I've given you the marking scheme in the question. So at least you have an idea of what is required or how much might need to be written. Oh, here it is. Okay, so let me just zoom out there now for a minute. You might. Okay. Take no notice of my camera equipment. I didn't think I would have to be doing this sort of thing from school or from home. So really what I've set up is my phone is effectively hanging above the desk here now. That's why it's rocking a bit. But I think it's fairly decent. Also, children could come in at any minute and make any kind of noises or do any kind of giving out or fighting. Anyway. Okay, so 2019 went forward. Again, ordinary level insulation. I'm going to let you read it yourselves. Um, again, look. Text is there. I'm not going to say anything about it, but I see sketches are required. I see notes are required. I see the word describe. I see the word discuss. And under each section, so for part A, there's the marking scheme for part A. For part B, there's the marking scheme for part B. And part C as well, the same thing. So this time we have a three-parter question. And like today's one, I'll come back with an answer for this. But not until you have submitted your answers. So that'll be on Wednesday. So I'm posting this today on Monday. And that'll be for Wednesday and I will talk to you again at that stage. So I hope all of this is going okay for you. And sure look. Look after each other and all of that. All right. Talk to you again. Bye bye.